The Predators, or Yautja, are a technologically advanced species possessing deadly weapons, interstellar space vessels, and high-tech gadgets. Join me in this one-hour video as we take a detailed look at them, from the iconic to the more obscure. Make sure to drop a like on the video and all that other algorithm stuff. Also, if you enjoy what I do, then you can support me by becoming a member. Thank you and enjoy the video. The Predator Biomask is one of the most prominent and iconic pieces of equipment employed by the Yautja species. Apart from the obvious function of protecting the Predator's face, the Biomask grants the wearer access to numerous different features such as sensory and respiratory aid, as well as weapons control. In appearance, Biomasks vary from model to model, some are simplistic and minimal in design, others more elaborate and ornate. They seem to all function similarly though, and the difference seems to be purely down to the individual's preference and not indicative of any kind of ranking system or status. However, more experienced and accomplished Yautja may have a mask that shows battle damage and age. Others may even be customised by the owner, featuring runes carved into them or may have trophies attached. Some tribes will mark their biomask and forehead with their clan symbol using the acidic blood of an alien after they've completed a rite of passage by killing their first xenomorph, reaching the rank named Blooded. Not all predators are seen to have this marking though, so it would seem that only some clans practice this ritual, and each predator will likely own more than just one mask, so probably only just use their first mask for this. Biomasks are made from a strong, durable alloy and offer protection from blunt attacks and smaller caliber bullets, but will not offer much protection from stronger attacks like larger rounds such as those from machine guns or sniper rifles, plasma caster shots or a head bite from a xenomorph. The biomask will enhance the predator's natural sight, which is in the infrared spectrum, as well as granting them access to a number of different vision modes, allowing them to see in different light spectrums. Some of these additional vision modes are Ultraviolet, which allowed the City Hunter to see a group of enemies who'd masked their own heat signatures in an attempt to ambush him. Alien Vision, used for seeing xenomorphs as they produce no body heat, so it would normally be difficult for a predator to spot. Tech Vision, used for detecting electromagnetic fields, highlighting working technology and machinery. Neurovision, used to read brainwaves, providing information on enemies' mental states and behaviour. Other vision modes used by the Super Predators include one used by the Berserker Predator, which seemed to detect pulses and heartbeats, and one used by Falconer to track footprints. A similar one to this was used by the Wolf Predator, where he used a syringe to extract cryogenic fluid which had made contact with a facehugger, allowing him to track them. The Wolf Predator also had a display allowing him to see a map of the area and where he had been before and place laser traps. Biomasks have a built-in zoom function, as well as the ability to scan health and vital signs, like how the Scar Predator was able to see that Charles Wayland was suffering from a terminal illness, and how the City Hunter was able to see that Leona Cantrell was pregnant and could tell that a kid was holding a plastic gun and not a real one. The biomask also has functions made for intimidation and scare tactics, to both cause confusion and to provoke prey into becoming hostile. These include vocal mimicry, which allows the predator to record and repeat back strips of sound, and flashing eyes, which they will use in conjunction with their stealth cloak. Numerous hoses are seen to connect the biomask to the predator's other systems. When these are disconnected, a gas is seen leaking out, suggesting that the mask aids the Yautja in breathing on other planets, such as Earth, where they can breathe in the local atmosphere but need to do so deeper and more heavily. Housed within the biomask is a targeting and tracking system, using a tri-laser sight making up the three corners of an open triangle, to aim at the designated target. Once locked on, the designator will show up as a red triangle in the predator's display, meaning the plasma caster is now locked on, and will track the target until a shot is fired or the lock is broken. This tracking system also allows the user to plot the trajectory of a thrown object. The laser sight is typically mounted on the right-hand side of the mask, but is sometimes seen on the left. 
the three laser darts are warm to the touch, this makes sense as the Predator's vision is based on heat and the Jungle Hunter was seen heating up his wrist blades with it. The biomask is linked to the Predator's wrist gauntlets, allowing the wrist computer to control some of its functions. However, the Predators have been seen to activate some things without touching the gauntlet, suggesting that the mask may have controls inside as well, possibly small buttons the Predator can manipulate with its mandibles, or perhaps it may even be linked to the Predator's brain or nervous system by means beyond our understanding. The Predator Plasma Caster, also known as the Shoulder Cannon, is a ranged energy projector weapon with automatic targeting capabilities that fires charged bolts of plasma. It is one of the most technologically advanced weapons in the Predator's possession. The Plasma Caster itself is mounted on top of an articulated arm and controlled by the Predator's biomask. Once a target has been acquired, the Predator can highlight the prey with its biomask mounted laser designator, which its heads up display will then track and hone in on, showing as a red triangle in the mask's vision when locked on. When it is locked to a target, it will continue to track until the Predator selects a new one, even if he faces away from it. However, some have been seen with a laser targeter mounted directly to them, allowing for use without a biomask. The bolts fired from it will explode in a burst of plasma shrapnel upon impact, causing explosive damage, burns and cauterization. If it lands a direct hit, it usually deals fatal damage. The power of each individual blast can be adjusted manually, ranging from a lower setting all the way up to vaporising a prey item completely. This can be done by charging the shot before it is fired. The longer it is charged, the more energy it will have. These energy bolts are typically pale blue in colour, although yellow coloured shots have also been seen. The use of a plasma caster has to be earned by a youngblood yaucha. Each hunter must undergo a rite of passage, whereby they must hunt xenomorphs or other dangerous creatures. As this ceremony begins, they will be able to obtain the weapon. Plasma casters can vary in both appearance and power depending on the model. The most commonly seen type will have a short barrel and a rounded shape to the aft half. This design is nicknamed the hairdryer design, but other designs can have a more squared off shape. There is also a similar weapon called an energy flechette, which is like a plasma caster, only unguided and located on the predator's wrist gauntlet. They also seem to be less powerful. It is implied that the larger models are more powerful than the smaller ones, and in the case of the Wolf Predator, two plasma casters can be used together as a pair, and when they became damaged, he was seen using one in a handheld configuration called a plasma pistol. A Super Predator by the name of Berserker had a type of plasma caster with a rotary barrel design, allowing it to rapid fire like a gasoline gun. The Fugitive Predator's biomask had a built-in plasma caster that automatically activated when attacked, and the Assassin Predator had a plasma caster mounted on his wrist like an NG flechette, except more powerful. Other types of plasma caster can be modified to fire other types of munitions, such as fire plasma, dark plasma, and lasers, or can have the shot cover a wider area, damaging multiple enemies. When the Predators travel to other worlds, they are often seen wearing a net suit underneath their armour. This strange article of clothing is said to serve a number of uses. One of these is, according to Alien vs Predator Prey, is to help keep the wearer warm, allowing the Predator to adjust their body temperature to something more comfortable if the surrounding climate does not suit them. The way this works is that the mesh is made of a heated wire undersuit, which can be set to maintain a constant temperature closer to that of the Predator home world. Even the lowest setting is said to be uncomfortable for a human to touch, suggesting the Predator's planet is noticeably warmer than ours. This is supported by the fact that Predators prefer to visit Earth when the weather is at its hottest. However, not all Predators are seen wearing the material, and it is mostly seen being utilised by the classic Predator type, suggesting this may be down to genetic differences between the different subspecies, or the others might lack the technology. In concept art for the Alien vs Predator movie, the netting was depicted as a battle mesh, 
made of thicker leather straps riveted together. This design seems to be intended to give the predator wearing it enhanced protection from a xenomorph's attacks, namely from their claws or possibly from a tail stab, but wouldn't offer much protection from their acidic blood. Another reason would be to serve as a base to attach the pieces of a predator's armour to, preventing them becoming detached and falling off. Predator body armour is a protective sectional assemblage of armour plating worn by Yautja while they are on hunts. It is usually composed of a partial or full breastplate, pauldrons, gauntlets, groin, thigh and shin guards, neck protection and most notably the biomask, the outward design of which can range from simple and utilitarian to elaborate and decorative. Hunters will rarely wear fully protective suits, the reason for this is how, since the hunt requires stealth, speed and a fair bit of athleticism, Yaoche may forego parts of the suit for this reason as heavy armour often comes at the expense of mobility. An example would be how it is very common for a predator to wear only one half of the breastplate as a means to attach the plasma caster and backpack to, but not wear the other half. Perhaps some Yaoja may also choose to wear less armour as a silent testament of their own skill. Also, another reason some individuals may also not wear the thermal netting. The armour of a predator varies from clan to clan, and even within the clan, from individual to individual. An example of this is the three hunters Scar, Celtic and Chopper, who were from the same clan but had slightly different armour. The Lost Tribe from Predator 2 are another example. Often, predators will decorate themselves with the bones and hide of their prey, and their armour can be as varied as the physical appearance of the Yautja themselves, and appears to be based largely on the personal preference of the individual. Design changes can include tribal ornamentation and trophies, different arrangements of armour plates, and different colours and metals used for the individual pieces. As for actual clothing, Yautja seem to have little but a loincloth to keep them decent. In times of war, the military cast of Yautja will be called to the front lines. Unlike hunter-class predators, these soldiers are clad from head to toe in tactical supremacy armour. This defends against bullets, toxins, xenomorph blood, and even the vacuum of space. Worn by military Yautja, such as the Hydra and Blazer, this protective suit provides its wearer with substantial defences against kinetic, fire, and acid damage. Its exceptional hardness also deflects outright any projectiles not specifically designed to penetrate armour. Consequently, enemies must make a concentrated effort to defeat any predators possessing this defensive system. In the 2018 movie The Predator, the fugitive predator delivered an advanced suit of armour named the Predator Killer to the humans. It featured full body protection and built-in weaponry. And in the latest movie, Prey, the feral predator was seen to wear almost no armour whatsoever, and also had no net suit either. The predator wrist blades are one of the fundamental Yaucha weapons and a signature armament of theirs. These take the form of retractable, serrated, metallic blades which extend over the hand from a gauntlet worn on the predator's wrist. Typically, a twin pair of these parallel blades are housed within the wrist gauntlet, normally worn on the right hand wrist, but there are a number of stylistic variations to this basic arrangement. Wrist blades are the weapon of choice for most predators during close-up combat due to their simplicity and reliability. They are sharp enough to easily cut through flesh and bone, and are also used to flay defeated opponents. They are one of the first weapons a Yautja obtains. Wrist blades come in many different sizes, from ones that barely reach past a Yauja's clenched fist, all the way up to ones a metre in length. They can be opened wider by extending further outwards, giving them a prehensile ability to pin prey between the blades without causing injury if the predator wishes to do so. A predator can choose to reverse the blades into the opposite direction to serve a backhanded attack. They can also be fired out of the gauntlet as projectiles, although this is usually done as a last resort as the predator may not always be able to retrieve them afterwards. If they are heated up using the laser sight, they will be even more efficient while slicing through flesh. 
they have also seen to be used for non-combative purposes, such as opening doors in ancient ruins by inserting them into a specific slot like a key. They are normally worn on the right arm, but in some cases a predator has been seen with them on both arms, such as the Dark Predator and the other Elite Clan members, as well as the Brawler class from Aliens vs Predator Extinction. They will sometimes be camouflaged by the Predator's invisibility cloak, but other times they won't be. It is not explained why this is, but even when they are, they will become visible if they get covered with blood. Not all wrist blades are resistant to the effects of xenomorph acid blood, and will melt when coming into contact with it. It is thought to be only the case with young bloods, possibly to encourage them to use their other more acid resistant weapons like the combi stick and smart disc, which require more skill to master, and then they may earn the acid resistant wrist blades later on. Although most classic predators have a twin pair of blades, super predators are shown to instead prefer a single elongated blade. Other individuals have been seen with triple wrist blades. The upgraded predator had a fully retractable single blade attached with a cable like a harpoon that could be fired out then reeled back in. And a similar weapon to the wrist blades are the scimitars, extremely long blades attached to the underside of the wrists giving increased range over wrist blades, but at the cost of increased bulk and reduced manoeuvrability. Furthermore, while wrist blades can be folded away almost completely when not in use, scimitars have only limited retracting capabilities due to their size, meaning the user's mobility is hindered even when not in combat. The Predator Invisibility Cloak is an advanced piece of technology able to make the wearer almost undetectable. It works by warping light around the user instead of allowing it to bounce off of them, rendering them practically unseeable to the naked eye. It does this in such a fashion as to make surfaces behind the Predator appear visible through its body. However, the effect is not perfect, and especially during movement, some of the effects can be lost, leaving a visible silhouette and looking similar to a heat wave or rippling water. Regardless, it is still a highly effective form of camouflage, and if the predator keeps its movements to a minimum and remains at a distance of at least a few meters away, it will be incredibly difficult to spot, especially in an area with a lot of visible clutter such as a forest or jungle. While the cloak is highly effective against prey that see visible light like humans, it is useless against those with other means of detection such as xenomorphs. It is usually built into the wrist gauntlet, but has also been seen as a separate unit in the shape of a small metallic sphere, and is one of the first pieces of equipment a Yautja will receive. The reason for its use on hunts is to remain stealthy and maintain the element of surprise, but to also evade capture if things start to turn in the prey's favour. It is electrically powered and once activated will slowly drain its supplied power source. To recharge, the Yautja can find an electricity source and tap into that to replenish the cloaking system's energy. The cloak will malfunction if it comes into contact with water, and small arcs of electricity can be seen as it shorts out. It can also be affected by EMPs or electronic jamming. Sustaining a hit from gunfire or a melee weapon can also cause the unit to shut off. The feral predator from Prey had a cloak that was resistant to water, but would instead be interrupted by physical touch. Sometimes, the cloak can also be outspread to cover the predator's other equipment and weapons like wrist blades and combi sticks, and was once even seen to work on a noose of wire being used as a trap. But in other instances, these are left unaffected by it. It is likely that this is dependent on the model used and what type each individual predator or clan itself chooses to utilise. Sometimes while cloaked, a predator will flash its eye lenses on its biomask at its prey if they spot it. While it's not directly explained why, it is thought to be either used as a form of intimidation or to cause confusion. Also, the use of the biomask's targeting laser can also give the predator's position away, so while cloaked, the plasma caster is to be used wisely. The use of cloaking technology is not limited to use on individuals, but is also used on the Yautja's starships as well, and are capable of hiding an entire mothership from view.
The Predator Combi Stick, also known as a telescoping spear, or simply a spear, is a telescopic polearm weapon used for both blunt and stabbing attacks and can also be thrown. A Yauja hunter or warrior will usually receive the Combi Stick once they have finished their training and passed an arena combat trial. The Combi Stick weapon is constructed from an incredibly durable, acid resistant metal alloy that is also very lightweight. It is comprised of a handle with a textured grip and collapsible twin heads which extend and retract, making it easy to store when not in use, but when needed for combat, provides superior range over wrist blades. It can parry enemy melee attacks and is light and balanced, making it easy to throw over considerable distances. There have been a few different types and variations of the combi stick seen in use by the Yauja. The type used by the City Hunter and other Lost Hunters was copper in colour and larger in diameter with pointed ends, best used for stabbing and impaling. The most common type seen has a smaller form and has been in use with tribes such as the Isolated Clan and the Elite Clan for millennia. This type is grey-silver in colour and has small blades at the middle of each pole and rounded ones at the ends. Its size and lightness allow for quick attacks and it is light enough to be handled even by a human. And an ornate combi stick was given to Lex Woods by an ancient Yauja as a reward for working alongside the Scar Predator and helping to defeat a Xenomorph Queen. A counterpart weapon to the combi stick is the glaive, which features barbed blades which can slice through enemies with ease. If a Yauja is skilled enough and wishes to specialise into solely using the combi stick weapon, they can become what is known as a spear master. Spear masters are recognised for their superior combat agility, mental focus and dedication to craft. They can keep a single enemy at bay indefinitely, send a horde of attackers hurling backwards with a single blow, and can knock a xenomorph facehugger out of mid-air. Veteran spear masters acquire the deadly plasma glaive as a symbol of their status. This double-bladed weapon seethes with white-hot plasma that burns through enemy armour, giving it greater penetrating power than a standard spear. The Predator Wrist Gauntlets, also known as the Wrist Bracers or Wrist Computer, are pieces of technology worn by the Predators, typically with one on each wrist. They serve two functions, firstly as protective armour and also to house technology and weaponry utilised by the Yauja while on their hunts. Mounted on the Predator's left gauntlet will be a wrist computer, featuring a control panel which is used to control the onboard systems. It is connected directly to the Biomask, Plasma Caster and Cloaking system and used to operate them. The control panel has numerous different buttons and a digitised display with symbols in the Predator language lit up in red. The Predator systems are electrically powered and have an onboard battery that provides a charge for a limited time before it is depleted. When this happens, it can be recharged by finding an electricity source to tap into. This can range from power supply boxes to even lightning. The wrist computer is also able to project a holographic map, as seen in Alien vs Predator when the Celtic Predator brings up a map of the pyramid, and again in Predators when the classic Predator displays a hologram of the planet Earth. In the case of the Wolf Predator, the wrist gauntlet has seen to be capable of extracting and analysing DNA samples taken from a fluid that had made contact with a facehugger, then creating a specialised vision mode in the Predator's biomask to track that particular creature. And it was also shown to have a feature named the Power Punch Glove, enabling the wearer to smash a hole through obstacles even as hard as concrete. If the Predator is mortally wounded, to avoid either capture or their technology falling into the hands of their prey, the gauntlet is fitted with a self-destruct device in the form of a small but powerful bomb, enabling the Yautja to commit honourable suicide while simultaneously erasing all traces of its existence. It is not known if this is a nuclear blast, but the cloud it makes and how destructive it is for its size suggests it may be. And also, the gauntlets can house weaponry such as wrist blades, which serve as their primary melee weapon of choice, an energy flechette, essentially a smaller untargeted alternative to the plasma caster if that it is damaged, fire sharpened projectiles, and can also house a net gun.
The Smart Disc is a Yautja throwing weapon consisting of a round metallic hub and extremely sharp cutting blades. To operate the weapon, it is thrown like a discus in the general direction of the target prey, where it will hone in on them like a heat-seeking missile. After making contact, it will then return to the user like a boomerang. It can also double as a melee slashing weapon in close quarters combat. The Smart Disc's internal systems are computer controlled, keeping it balanced and stable while it travels through the air, and also giving the weapon a degree of auto guidance, allowing it to alter its course in mid air and follow a moving target if necessary. The means by which the disc maintains its altitude and momentum during these manoeuvres is not understood, and it is not obvious whether or not it has its own onboard propulsion system, clearly involving technologies far in advance of anything possessed by mankind. Smart discs are capable of automatically tracking a target, although some have been shown to be manually directed in flight using the Biomask's targeting laser. The weapon is capable of tracking multiple targets with one throw, giving it capabilities against large groups of enemies that most other Predator weapons do not possess. Its razor edges are capable of cutting through most materials with ease. A smart disc has been seen to easily cut through half a dozen beef carcasses and a man in quick succession. It is also responsive enough to target a jumping facehugger mid-flight. The smart disc can be compacted down when not in use for ease of storage. This telescoping action also activates and deactivates the disc's systems. It can then be stored either on a special holster located on the leg or hung around the waist. Another variant of the smart disc, sometimes called the shuriken, works essentially the same in operation, but with a smaller form and curved blades which extend out from the grip. Also, like the standard smart disc, shurikens have considerable cutting power and are capable of slicing through a xenomorph's exoskeleton. In addition to the cutting capability, the shuriken is also able to impale prey to surfaces. One was seen to carry enough velocity to lift and pin a human to a wall several feet above the floor. However, the downside to this is that the disc will be unable to return to the user. It is not uncommon for the weapon to fail in this regard and become lodged in solid surfaces instead of returning to the predator and will have to be manually retrieved. When not in use, the shuriken's six blades fold away into the hub for ease of storage. Other versions seem to combine traits of the standard and shuriken smart discs, giving them a balance between the two styles. These can also feature blades which vibrate at subsonic speeds, ripping the prey apart from the inside. Some predators can specialise into using the smart disc as their main weapon if they are skilled enough and possess a form of telekinesis, giving them a degree of mental control, allowing them to direct multiple discs using only the mind. Although such a skill takes years to hone, these specialists are known as disc masters. Predators rarely hunt in large groups, thus they cannot expect to receive quick or organised assistance should they suffer any injuries while hunting. As a result, an individual Yautja will tend to carry their own personal forms of first aid to ensure they are able to treat themselves. This takes the form of the med kit, also called a medicomp, and is stored on the predator's back as part of their so-called backpack. It is a handheld sized carrying case containing serums and tools used to treat a wide range of injuries quickly and effectively. A typical med kit will contain surgical tools like syringes, wound clamps, a shrapnel extractor, surgical stapler and scissors, as well as medicines like antiseptic, cauterizing solvent and an adrenaline shot. Another depiction of the medicomp comes in the form of the health shards, where the predator injects itself with two needles that heal the body. This type is typically seen in the AVP games, and in Predator Concrete Jungle, it is depicted as a gun-shaped syringe that heals all wounds. This one looks to be made of wood, which is highly unusual. The tools and methods used to heal the Yauja are very painful and no anaesthetic is shown to be used, as they will showcase physical pain and discomfort during treatment. 
In the first film, the jungle hunter uses his medicom to heal a bullet wound. The visible contents are powder, a shrapnel extractor, a spatula, a pair of scissors, two wound clamps, a stimulant shot and a tube of antiseptic. The case opens by a push latch mechanism and can be identified as part of the shoulder pack from the ridges across its top edge. The city hunter uses his kit to cauterise where his arm was cut off and to heal bullet wounds on his body. It has a radically different design to jungle hunters with a different shape and is a coppery colour matching his armour. The unit contains surgical blades, a shrapnel extractor, wound clamps, a spatula, a burner for melting medicine, a needle with two reloads for it, a container full of blue solvent and an emergency breathing mask. When the predator uses the burner, he crushed pieces of wall tiles and a mirror before adding the blue solvent to it, forming a gel and used it to cauterise the wounds. It is interesting to see how anything can be used to make the cauterising gel as it doesn't require any specific ingredients, with the blue liquid requiring nothing else except for mass to form the medicine, showing how advanced their medical technology is. In Alien vs Predator, it resembles the Predator 1 version but is never seen in use. In AVP Requiem, the casing has a similar design again, but splits apart, revealing a surgical stapler. The use of staples to close wounds as opposed to needles is due to the fact that the Predator's hide is too thick for surgical needles. In Predators, the Super Predators don't possess any backpacks at all and no healing is seen being performed on screen. This is likely because they always had their ship close by so any medical equipment would be stored there. The Crucified Predator does have the same design as the first movie, but like his Super Predator Nemesis is also never seen using it. In The Predator, no medicomps are seen in the movie at all, and in Prey, the Feral Predator wears a large pack over the right hand side instead of the left like normal, containing a first aid gun, a medical gel dispenser which essentially glues wounds shut again. The Predator Net Launcher, also called the Net Gun, is a Yautja weapon that fires a lacerating wire net to disable prey and cause injury or even kill it outright. The weapon works by firing a bundled net which rapidly expands as it leaves the barrel. The net travels with enough speed and velocity to hurl a target across the room upon contact and pinning the victim to a nearby surface. The wire net is attached to a series of anchors which, when attached to a surface, will begin to wind the net in, constricting whatever is caught inside and causing horrific lacerations. The Predator will usually use it to disable the prey and then finish it off with another one of its weapons. The material the net is made from is very durable and impossible to cut with readily available tools like knives, although the City Hunter's smart disc was strong enough to cut it open. The material is also not impervious to xenomorph acid blood, therefore nets are unreliable at disabling the creatures completely, although they can still be useful to restrain xenomorphs temporarily during heated battles, just so long as it is dealt with quickly before they can break free. The weapon is best used on prey of a similar size to the Yautja itself, such as humans or xenomorph drones, as the nets are simply not large enough to encircle something like a Praetorian or Queen. It is never shown how a predator would reload the net gun, although it would be most logical for a form of cartridge mechanism to be used, as manually reloading a net would be both difficult and time consuming. A cartridge reload would also provide a fresh net should one be damaged during use. The net gun itself is a small device which has been seen in a handheld form used by the City Hunter in Predator 2. This type has a grip the Predator's hand fits into, and then when not in use it can be stored on its leg armour. And the other configuration was seen as being attached to the wrist gauntlet, as seen on the Celtic Predator in Alien vs Predator. This type would seem to be the fastest to equip, but it also looks like it would have to be switched out with the wrist computer, as we first see Celtic with a wrist computer, but then later he has a net launcher, so the Predator would have to know he wants to use it ahead of time. One detail the Predators or Yauja are known for is their diverse range of weaponry. 
Some of the most prominently featured hunting tools seen on film are the wrist blades, the plasma caster, the smart disc, the combi stick, and introduced in the latest movie Prey, the bolt gun. But not all of their weapons are as well known, and there are many others that you may have overlooked or forgotten about. In this video, we're going to be looking at 15 rare Yauja weapons from the movies in no particular order. But before we begin, make sure to leave a like on the video for all the time and effort I put into making it, as fully scripted and edited videos such as this one take hours to make, so I really do appreciate it when you all do that, as liking videos helps a lot when it comes to the algorithm. So without further delay, let's begin, starting with... Number 1, The Ceremonial Dagger. The Ceremonial Dagger was first seen in Alien vs Predator when the Celtic Predator battles the Xenomorph known as Grid. It is seen again when Scar fashions weapons for Lex Woods out of a Xenomorph head and tail. Its primary use is to remove the carapace of a Xenomorph to take trophies from, but it could also be used as a close contact weapon if need be. The Ceremonial Dagger was stored in a sheath attached to the right shins of all three Youngblood Predators in AVP, and is treated to be immune against Xenomorph blood. The weapon is associated with the blooding rite of Youngblood Yauja. Number 2, the Biomask Cannon. Introduced in The Predator, the Fugitive's Mask featured a built-in miniature plasma caster, which would emerge from its fairing and fire automatically at anything that attacked the wearer. It operated entirely independently from the user's inputs and worked even when the mask was not worn. Number 3, the Razor Wire Noose. Seen in Alien vs Predator, in the scene where Scar uses it to take out one of Wayland's mercenaries, it was made using the same wire used to hang bodies, but fashioned into a noose. Scar also used it later to fashion weapons for Lex. It could be camouflaged using the cloaking device, making it almost impossible to see. The material is slim but strong, able to hold the weight of an adult human as it yanks them up. It also constricts around the throat in such a way that the victim cannot produce any noise, allowing Yauchas to pick off stragglers in the group with utmost stealth. Number 4, the Energy Flechette. Introduced in Predator 2, the Energy Flechette is mounted in the Yauchas wrist gauntlet. While some versions are seemingly fixed in place, others have been seen that fold away into the gauntlet when not in use. It is similar in many respects to the more common plasma caster weapon, albeit firing significantly less powerful bolts and with many of the latter's more advanced features removed. For example, the energy flechette is incapable of tracking targets independently, and it does not feature an integrated laser sight. As such, it must be aimed by the Yautja literally pointing their arm at the target, and is only suitable at close range. It would also be difficult to use against small or fast-moving targets. Owing to its simplistic nature and somewhat lacking power, the energy flechette is seemingly only intended as a backup weapon to be used in situations where more powerful weaponry is unavailable or disabled. Number 5, the wrist shield. Seen in the movie Prey, and also simply known as the shield, it is a deployable device used to deflect enemy attacks. It is highly durable and easily retractable when not in use. The device was able to withstand blunt force, bladed weapons, and even bullets from muskets and pistols. It could also be used offensively, as its edges were sharp enough to slice through the neck of an enemy when activated at close range. Number 6, Mines and Traps. Several variations of these weapons have been seen, although they all share similar characteristics in that they are static weapons triggered either when an enemy passes close by, or activated remotely via the wrist computer. In AVPR, a wolf's laser mines would slice through anything that passed through the beams, and in Predators, the Super Predators used bear trap-like snares to maim. Number 7, Cut Clamps. Seen in Prey being used by the Feral Predator, they were metallic coiled cutting tools which, when unfurled, could be wrapped around objects and would cut through them with its sharp inner blades. These were used to free the Predator from traps and also as an offensive weapon and could sever limbs. Number 8, Scimitar Blades. 
Seen on the Chopper Predator in Alien vs Predator, they are similar to wrist blades in function, but offer greatly increased range owing to their greater size, but at the cost of increased bulk and reduced manoeuvrability. Furthermore, while wrist blades can be folded away completely when not in use, scimitars have only limited retracting capabilities, meaning the user is affected by their bulk even when not in combat. When fully extended, a scimitar blade can be as long as a predator's leg, giving the hunter significant range in a melee encounter. As an added benefit, they are also covered by a predator's cloak even when extended fully. Number 9. Kujad Projectile Weapon When attached to the wrist gauntlet, the Kujad can act as a weapon, similar in principle to the energy flechette, but instead of firing plasma-based projectiles, it instead fires a tiny discus with enough power to not only pierce the thick hide of a Yauja, but also cleanly slice through the flesh and bone of a human with relative ease. Number 10. The Falcon Drone Seen being utilised by the Falconer Predator in Predators, the Falcon Drone was not so much an offensive weapon, but was primarily a UAV used for scouting and locating prey. Although it looks to have had a small blade attachment on the front of the fuselage, and the NECA version had two wrist blade sized attachments, so perhaps it did possess some offensive capabilities. Number 11. The Bull Whip Used by the Wolf Predator in AVPR, the Bull Whip, also known as the Razor Whip, is a segmented handheld whip that wraps around an enemy, and once pulled taut is capable of cutting it in half. It is immune to Xenomorph Acid, due to it possibly being constructed out of a Xenomorph's tail. Number 12. The Spear Tip Launcher Introduced in Predator 2, the City Hunter's wrist gauntlet featured a slot which could fire a U-shaped projectile with a weighted tail and two serrated prongs. They are made from an unknown metal that is incredibly lightweight, yet able to cut like hardened steel. They have a blood groove down the middle, designed to cause a target to bleed out if they become stuck in the flesh. Number 13. Power Punch Glove the Power Punch, also known as the Brass Knuckles, were used by Wolf in AVPR. The device consisted of a metal bridge that extended on command from the Predator Gauntlet to connect with Brass Knuckles worn on the hound. It was used to give a Yaucha a boost in punching strength, allowing it to perform a punch powerful enough to make a hole in solid concrete. Its main purpose was to open up new paths and reach otherwise inaccessible areas. Number 14, Ceremonial Spears. Seen being carried by Chopper in AVP, they were a pair of small throwing and stabbing weapons with human skulls mounted on the other ends. Number 15, Dissolving Liquid. Used by Wolf in AVPR, it was a highly potent corrosive blue chemical used to dissolve any piece of organic material it made contact with, including xenomorph carcasses and human bodies. Although not its designed purpose, dissolving liquid could also be used as a weapon in a desperate situation. The substance also reacted violently with water, and a small amount of the solvent could vaporise large quantities of water and any other material in it. The Predator Bolt Gun, also referred to as Spear Gun or Spear Tip Launcher, is a Yaucha projectile weapon that launches razor-sharp metal spikes towards a target. The weapon is ideal for sniping and operates almost silently, allowing the user to remain stealthy while attacking. They come in a manner of designs from handheld versions to ones located on the Predator's wrist gauntlet. The version wielded by the Feral Predator from Prey was named the Bolt Gun, and fired homing projectiles which sought out their targets by way of the biomass laser. The system used a standard triple laser sight, but each dot could separate to target up to three individual body parts. Up to three rounds could be held in the chamber, and were elevated into the firing position by what looked like either an anti-gravity or magnetic field, and then were shot out at high velocity. The ammunition had an onboard guidance system that would lead them to each laser. After firing, the bolts could then be retrieved by the Predator for reuse. It features a handle grip with a trigger and had small white lights on the side which indicated when it was ready to fire. When not in use, the weapon could be stored on a dedicated mount located on the Predator's back.
While the version seen in Prey will likely go down as the best known example of the weapon, the first official time the weapon was seen was in Predator 2 when the city hunter attacked the Jamaicans inside the penthouse. This version fired a U-shaped spear tip with two forward-facing serrated prongs. These are made of an unknown metal that doesn't correspond to anything on the periodic table and are almost weightless but cut like steel. This type is fired from a slot located on the bottom of the wrist gauntlet and seemed to be unguided. In Predator 1, when Blaine is first hit, if the movie is paused at the right moment, some sort of projectile can be seen just before it makes impact. While we don't know what it is fired from, the original creature design was meant to feature a spear gun weapon, which was then replaced by the plasma caster in the final design. This would have been the first time the weapon was used, but since it is never confirmed in the final version of the film exactly what it's supposed to be, it cannot be said for certain. It's also possible this could have been one of the Jungle Hunter's wrist blades being shot out like we see other Predators do in later films. In the video games Aliens vs Predator and Aliens vs Predator 2, a two-handed version of the spear gun is used. This type is so powerful it can decapitate a human if shot in the head or impale them to walls if shot in the body. It also features a scope like a sniper rifle. In the AVP Extinction, the spear gun used by the Stalker unit type was an extremely long range weapon that was silent and would cause bleeding when upgraded to fire bleeder spears. The bleeder spear gun fires a large number of hideously barbed harpoons. And in Predator Concrete Jungle, the Scarface Predator used a handheld version with telescoping action allowing it to be reduced in size when not in use to make it easier to carry. The Feral Predator from Prey was a unique specimen, not only possessing a distinctive appearance, but he also sported different weapons and gadgetry that were more primitive compared to those seen previously. This was in part due to the creature's unique background, with him hailing from a different hemisphere of Yautja Prime, but also because he was around 300 years earlier than those from the other movies, and there may have been some advancements yet to be made. In this video, we'll be taking a detailed deep dive into the Feral's different weapons and technology that he uses throughout the film. Starting with the Biomask, the Feral Predator's mask has a very unique design. It is made from the hollowed out skull of an alien creature with the Biomask optics installed inside it. Underneath the plates of bone lie heat sensitive nodes which send the data to his network of heat sensing organs and compiles it into a visual feed to his eyes, which explains why there is no visible visor. This can be seen in this shot of the inside of the mask here. The mask's infrared vision enhances that of the Predator's natural sight, but has no additional vision modes. It also features a heads-up display and zoom function. A tri-targeting laser system is present which controls the bolt gun weapon. Each of the three dots can select a target each. The bottom half of the mask leaves the mandibles exposed, similar to some Kenner designs, or some which do cover the sides but not the front. Originally, the mask was meant to feature a red glow coming from underneath, which ultimately was not used. The bolt gun, Feral's main weapon, it fired guided bolts controlled via the biomask laser system and could go after a total of three targets separately if necessary. The weapon layout features a long horizontal handle connected to the main body of the weapon. The barrel on the front holds the bolts, which are elevated into the firing position and launched by an anti-gravitational field. On each side there is a power limb and it has white dot lights which will indicate when it's ready to fire. A major drawback to the bolt gun is that it is reliant on the targeting system to hit its mark. Even when the Feral Predator is not wearing the mask, the lasers still light up before the weapon is used, which was how the Feral Predator was defeated. Another drawback is that it has limited space for ammunition, only three shots in total, and the Yautja must also manually retrieve the bolts before they can be used again. Nonetheless, it is still a very effective weapon and especially useful for sniping. 
wrist blades, a pair of retractable gauntlet mounted knives which extend to over a foot in length. They have a dark metallic colouring and slope down at the ends. These are standard Yauja equipment and are usually mounted on the right hand side. They are used for close melee attacking and also for flaying and collecting the head of a fallen opponent. Cloaking device, an advanced form of camouflage that distorts visible light around the form of the wearer, making them a lot harder to see. Compared to most other Yauja, this predator had a unique cloak as it had a hexagonal beehive pattern to it and a red field disruption which would occur when the cloak made physical contact with foreign objects and would become overwhelmed and fail during events like dust storms, ash clouds or getting hit with a weapon. This cloak also seemed to have a degree of water resistance and wouldn't immediately short out like others. Like some other versions, the wrist blades were not covered and easily visible when in use. Wrist gauntlets, a pair of wrist coverings with bone inlays and a built-in computer. The right one houses the wrist blades and the left one features a set of three self-propelled bombs for cleaning out large groups of enemies, as well as the wrist shield, a deployable defensive device which opens up and fans out into a circular shield. Compared to the Yautja wielding it, it's small but durable and easily retractable when not in use. It was able to withstand bullets from muskets and pistols. The device could also be used offensively, being sharp enough to slice through the neck of an enemy when activated at close range. The Separable Combi Stick, a telescopic spear weapon, relatively small and easy to store when not in use, and extends to full length when required for combat. It is made of incredibly light, sharp, thin but strong material. It can be used both as a close quarters hand to hand weapon and thrown like a spear. The one used by Feral was unique in the fact it could be detached into a pair of fighting sticks and featured a sharpened end and a bludgeoning end. Razor Net Like the net gun weapon, except thrown by hand, used to trap and ensnare prey. Once fired, the net itself has the ability to tighten around its trapped target with sufficient force to cause the wire mesh to cut into the victim. The one used by Feral was a cylindrical shape when in the closed position and had red lights around it. When thrown, it would split apart and then rejoin when it lands. The design was originally going to resemble a more primitive version of the City Hunter's net gun and would have fired an X-shaped razor wire that would cut the victim into quarters. Cut clamps, also known as bowlers, a small handheld weapon thrown at an enemy's limb. It wraps around and triggers the snare, severing the limb instantly. Can also be used to free the predator from traps. When not in use, it can be collapsed into a coil for ease of storage. Disintegrator gas, used by the feral predator to decompose any organic remains left on a victim's skull such as fur, flesh and muscle, was seen used on a wolf after the predator defeated it in combat and claimed its head as a prize. Similar in a way to the dissolving liquid, perhaps a less concentrated version of the same substance. Backpack, which houses the Medicomp unit, used to patch up injuries he sustains fighting the French voyagers. The instrument he's seen using dispenses a medical gel when shaken and is used to close lacerations. The Yautja are an advanced spacefaring alien race who are able to travel to other planets and hunt such exotic species thanks to their fleets of interstellar spaceships. An important detail that, despite featuring in every single Predator movie, isn't something discussed very often. They can vary greatly in design and incorporate advanced technology and weapons. Many also feature their own trophy walls, representing the many life forms the Yautja have encountered across the galaxy. There are two main types, scout ships and mother ships. The scout ships are small spacecraft used to transport and deploy either individual or small numbers of hunters and can carry around half a dozen crew. They are powered by external thrusters and flown by a single pilot. They also have an autopilot feature and can remain in a holding zone until the hunter is ready to be picked up again. Scout ships usually possess a trophy room, a tactical room equipped with holographic devices, a storage room for captive facehuggers and drop pods to deploy a hunter from orbit. 
Drop pods are sleek, elongated capsules used to insert individual predators to the surface of a planet, allowing them to reach the surface quickly, often undetected, without the need for the whole ship to set down. Scout ships possess a relatively weak hull, as in AVPR, a single hit from a plasma caster from the inside was able to down the vessel, although the exterior of the ships are more durable, as the same one seen remained mostly intact despite crashing to Earth and did not break apart. The Mothership is a massive long-range mobile base for Yautja hunters and can house an entire clan. These ships are made for long missions and are equipped with hypersleep chambers. They are totally independent craft where a number of scout ships can dock, and they utilise cloaking technology that renders them both visually and sensor invisible, making them virtually impossible to find. Most mother ships also have a trophy case in which its clan's trophies are put on display. Some of the ships hold a captive xenomorph queen, which the Yautja warriors can release in an area for a hunt. They are fully equipped with scout ships and insertion pods, and are also fitted with powerful weapons including a plasma beam powerful enough to punch a hole from orbit down to the crust, and plasma rockets that can down a Conestoga class starship in only a few hits. In Predator 1, the Jungle Hunter is dropped off by a scout ship. This is our first ever look at a Predator ship, and the design has a rounded shape with two engines mounted either side of the fuselage, a vertical stabiliser underneath, and two cannons on the front. It is a grey colour with bronze accents. The ship is equipped with drop pods and is seen jettisoning one containing the Jungle Hunter. In Predator 2, the Lost Tribes ship was hidden inside a sewer drain that ran beneath an apartment block. It had a segmented, asymmetrical design, much like other Yauja technology, and a dark coloration. Inside the ship, the walls are covered in runes, and a trophy case was featured prominently, containing a xenomorph skull. It can house at least 10 predators. In Alien vs Predator, the isolated clan had giant motherships, which are the largest seen on screen so far, and have been used for millennia. They are a metallic colour and have a long, streamlined shape. On each side, they have extendable sections for atmospheric flight, which will then retract for space flight. Despite their size, they are very stealthy with an invisibility cloak and near-silent running engines. They are equipped with a plasma beam and rockets. On each side, there are docking areas for scout ships. An interesting detail to note is that in the movie, the docked ships are the same model as Predator 1. This type was seen deploying the three Youngbloods via drop pod, and then when the Yautja retrieved Scar's body. Was also seen in the Predator Concrete Jungle and Aliens vs Predator video games. A scout ship that detached from the mother ship and crashed in AVP Requiem had three engines and a similar but different shape to the Predator 1 style scout ship and contained captive facehuggers. Wolf's ship was a small, high-speed, single-occupant craft and dropped the Elite to Earth inside a drop pod. In Predators, a ship was seen on the Game Preserve planet. This model had vertical thrusters and belonged to either the Crucified Predator or the Super Predators. The Crucified Classic Predator set it to fly to Earth in exchange for Royce cutting him free, but he was killed by Berserker and the Super Predator leader set it to self-destruct. The Fugitive Predator's ship, also known as the Ark, crashed in Mexico when it was damaged by the Pursuing Assassin Predator ship. Parts of it survived, and the Predator technology was recovered by Project Stargazer. This ship could open wormholes to travel vast distances instantly. The Assassin Predator's ship was larger and more combat capable. It had an energy shield that could deflect incoming projectiles. It was destroyed when one of the loonies jumped into the engine and it went down in a forest. In Prey, the Feral Predator arrived via a scout ship which dropped him off directly instead of by drop pod. Possibly as this was the 18th century so they may not have been in use yet, or maybe this particular ship just didn't have them. This scout ship had rotating thrusters and was seen to cloak on its departure. Other Yautja ships from the Expanded Universe include the so-called Chicken Ship from Aliens vs Predator 1999, the Royal Ship from Aliens vs Predator 2, the Predator Hunting Ground Ship, the Saucer from Predator The Big Game, 
the Cold War ship from Predator Cold War, the Bad Blood ship from Predator Bad Blood, the Bullet from Predator Nemesis, the Safari ship from Predator the Pride at Nagasa, the Golden Mother ship from Aliens vs Predator War, the Predator Shuttle from Aliens vs Predator War, the Predator Drop ship from the first AVP comic, Hook Predator's ship from AVP Thicker Than Blood, the Gotham City ship from Batman vs Predator, the Gotham City Enforcer ship from Batman vs Predator, and the Dog ship from Aliens vs Predator vs The Terminator. Make sure you let everyone know what your thoughts are in the comments section and remember to leave a like as well. Then if you want to help support the channel then you can become a member from as little as 1.99. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.